pastor for the Racine Campus of Great Lakes Church. I am Brian and Michelle's pastor. And on behalf of them, we just say welcome. Thanks for coming tonight. What an awesome occasion this is as we have gathered together to celebrate the joining the marriage of Brian and Michelle. This is a sacred moment and not to be entered into lightly. Brian and Michelle have selected to be married here on this property, surrounded by family and friends because of their desire to have God's richest blessing on their marriage. Uh, if you'll bow your heads with me, I want to do a real quick prayer. So God, we thank you so much for what this uh, symbolizes, what this means today. We thank you for Brian and Michelle. We thank you for the covenant and the commitment that they are about to make together. And we just ask that you to bless this ceremony. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Brian and Michelle, you stand here before God and your family and your friends ready to be united in the bonds of holy matrimony. Today, your separate lives with your own memories, your own achievements, your own aspirations will be merged into one. We'll stand on the threshold of a fresh and exciting life where years will unfold like petals of a rose, ever growing in beauty and fragrance. You'll now find new dimensions and higher planes of love that only a God-centered union can know. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? I do. <laughs> well, in creation, Adam was the last the most excellent of all of God's creative works. Then Eve was formed out of Adam's side. The scripture sets an honor upon the woman as being the glory of man. She was not taken from man's head in order to dominate him, nor was she taken from his feet to be trampled upon by him, but rather God took her out of man's side to walk hand in hand with him, from under his arm to be protected by him, and from near his heart to be loved by him for the remainder of their lives. Today you take on a great responsibility. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28 says, a man that loves his wife loves himself. And this should be the motto for your marriage. It is one of those brief but rich passages whose full and wonderful meanings often escape us. Until you met, you lived individual and independent lives. Until you met, you had different home lives, different friends, different psychological needs, different emotional reactions, different fears and different problems. But now you've decided to take these two individual lives, which until now have been lived with in a different frame of reference and apart from each other, and to blend them into one life, a shared life. In a few minutes, you will become husband and wife. And from that moment, you can really no longer think of yourselves as two separate individuals. Neither of you can any longer be entirely independent of the other. You will be dependent upon one another for the very existence of your life together. And this is really what Paul was saying in the book of Ephesians. When you love each other, he's saying you're really not loving another person at all. You're loving a part of yourself. He views a marriage not as an institution made up of two individual parts, but an entity made up of two parts. Each of you is a part of the other. This is a lifelong oneness that you are beginning today. It doesn't change with health or with circumstances. This is a oneness that is solidified by God and is to remain in unity until God himself dissolves. Brian, whatever happens to Michelle, happens to you. Michelle, whatever happens to Brian, happens to you. Whatever happens to either of you is happening to the other. This means that your joys and your successes are doubled because there are two of you to enjoy them, and your sorrows and your disappointments and your failures are cut in half because there are two of you to share them. However, this does not come about automatically. It begins here on this property today. You will need to constantly work at making it a unity each and every day. Many things will happen in every married life that tends to undermine the unity of marriage. But as you become one with each other, you will be working at understanding each other and cementing your oneness. You will start fresh every day to live for each other. For as long as you love each other, you also are loving a part of yourself. Brian, 
Will you have Michelle to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinances in the holiest state of matrimony? Would you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, in prosperity and adversity, and forsaking all others, keeping only to her as long as you both shall live? I do. <laughs> Michelle, will you have Brian to be your wedded husband, to live together? after God's ordinances in the holy state of matrimony. Will you love him and comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, in prosperity and adversity, forsaking all others, keeping only to him as long as you both shall live? Please join your right hands. <laughs> Brian, repeat after me. I, Brian, I, Brian. take you, Michelle, take you, Michelle. <laughs> to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward, for better for worse, for richer for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and comfort, honor and keep, as long as we both shall live, according to God's holy ordinance. And there too, I give you my love. Michelle, repeat after me. I'm Michelle. I'm Michelle. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. To be my wedded husband. Mm -hmm. To have it to hold from this day forward. Mm -hmm. For better, for worse. For, better. for richer, for poorer. Mm -hmm. In sickness and in health. <coughs> to love and comfort. To love and comfort. Honor and keep. Mm -hmm. As long as we both shall live. According to God's holy ordinance. There too, I give you my love. May I have the rings? Hey, easy. Kiss <laughs> <laughs> nobody up. All right. Now that you have taken these vows, we come to the significant moment of giving and receiving rings. May these rings be the outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites your two hearts in love. These rings are endless circles. They symbolize the unbroken union, which is to continue until broken by death. Let these rings continue to be worn by both of you as a symbol of the value and the purity of the true wedded love and the seal of the vows which you have made. I'm not doing anything down here. <laughs> Brian, if you will repeat after me. Oh, I gave you the wrong one. <laughs> Ready? I give you this token. I give you this token. As a pledge of my constant faith. As a pledge of my constant faith. And abiding love. With this ring, I be wed. In the name of the Father. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Repeat after me. I give you this token as a pledge of my constant faith and abiding love. With this ring, I be wed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this time we're going to move into uh, a part of the uh, the wedding, which is in the communion. But before, um, Dylan wants to come up, Michelle's son, and uh, say just a few words. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> uh, awesome to see everyone here. I don't get to be in town much, so this is a good occasion to be here. Um, so if you know either of their stories, you know that they both had some great times and they both had some, some pretty hard struggles uh, individually uh, in their lives. And being at this such a small ceremony, I think it's safe to say that we've all taken part, been a part of those struggles, cried with them, laughed with them, struggled with them, stayed up all night uh, doing things like that. Um, and in Galatians 6.2, it actually says uh, that we are to carry one another's burdens. And in doing so, we fulfill the law of Christ. Um, so to that, I say thank you to everyone here. I think that we've all, in one way or another, um, 
Springfield, the law of strength. Uh, in that way, um, it's, it's been a pleasure. It's been a time for us. Um, so being through all these struggles, fulfilling that law, carrying the burdens, we are the, the few chosen uh, to be here to be a part of this awesome occasion as they uh, continue on in their lives as normal. And in the, uh, the months leading up to the wedding, uh, I don't know if everyone knows this or any, but they, they took some steps to um, better understand what, what marriage is, better understand this commitment uh, that they're making to each other. And a big part of that was they went through a book called uh, The Sacred Marriage. Um, and this book was, I, I just skimmed through it, and I know a few different people that have read it. And it's, it can be, it's a great read, but it can be a tough read uh, together with, with someone that you want to share your life with. You get asked real questions, it challenges you, it causes them to look at each other and ask some really tough questions to struggle through, like, um, do you really love me? And, whoop. <laughs> um, because true love isn't, isn't on the outside, isn't when you look at, you know, a beautiful bride on a wedding day simply and say, wow, you look gorgeous walking up that aisle, I love you. It's when you can see my mom, I come home from the sweaty, thank you, <laughs> come home from the sweaty day at the gym and start arguing with me or Peyton or someone, and when Brian can sit back and see this sweating, yelling woman and say, wow, I, I love you. <laughs> and it's, it's happened. <laughs> um, yeah, true love is when you can look at the darkest corners of someone's soul, like the dirtiest, stinkiest part way deep in there that the person doesn't even want to expose. And say, that part right there, I love it, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and that's, that's the love that you're seeing right here. That's the commitment that they're making. Um, the, the biggest lesson, the biggest takeaway from the book, uh, according to what I understand, the biggest thing that they, they came together and realized um, is that this commitment, this marriage, is not just uh, to make them happy. Brian isn't standing there saying, yes, this thing is going to make me happy forever. Uh, because honestly, they're two imperfect people and they're going to fail at that. Um, this marriage, this commitment that they're making is, is in fact to make them more whole. To, uh, to draw them closer to God, to encourage them to experience that love. Um, as the book states it, marriage is the gym in which our capacity to experience and express God's love can be strengthened and further developed. Once again, if you know either of them, they, they hit the gym quite a bit. Um, you stay in shape. My mom's done multiple marathons, and, and that's the thing. Well, well, right now, you guys are committing to a different kind of gym with a lifetime membership. And Instead of pushing up metal, you're pushing and encouraging and just pushing each other to, to experience this perfect love of God and not just experience it, but, but to express it to each other and express it to, to everyone else here. And in all honesty, what, what could be a better relationship? You're not going to always succeed at making each other happy. You're going to fail. You're going to get upset with each other. But when you can even in those dark times, push each other to, to experience that love and then express it back to each other and to others. I mean, what could be better? Um, so, for all of us here, this is the commitment that we witness. This is, um, we are the few chosen that, that get to bear witness to this um, and uh, are committing to each other. So, um, I would encourage myself as well as all of us, as our job is to remind them of this, remind them where their first priority to each other is. For you to push my mom to experience God's love when yours might not be enough. And for her to uh, express that back to your mom, the same as Brian. Um, so if we need to remind them of this. We need to constantly keep them in our prayers. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm, <laughs> ah, I'm going back to Galatians 6 2. They're going to have struggles. They're a married couple. They're human. They're imperfect. We are the ones that. Um, they want to be here, and we're the ones that should carry these burdens with them. That should be the shoulder to cry on, the encouragement to them. And when the load gets too heavy for them to carry alone, we, we need to be there for them. God makes this work. So, yeah, uh, Brian, Mom, congrats, I love you. Eleanor's welcome to the family. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> well, Brian and Michelle, you have committed yourselves to one another. Now I ask you to dedicate yourselves to do to take the Lord uh, by taking the team. This is an outward testimony of the desire to follow the Lord Jesus Christ together all of the days of your life. The broken bread symbolizes your broken body, given for spiritual sustenance. As you both eat this bread, may you feel the oneness 
that is because of the body and the communion of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cup symbolizes his blood shed for the cleansing of your sins. As you drink it, you are partaking in his death and volunteering your allegiance to Jesus, the Son of God. As you both drink from one cup, may you silently pledge to the other and to the Lord that fellowship and communion with Christ will ever be the ground upon which your marriage is saved. Now let me charge you during your life together. May there be enough tears to keep you tender, enough hurts to keep you human, enough failures to keep your hand tightly in God, and enough success to make sure you walk in God. May you never take each other's love for granted. May you serve God happily and faithfully together until life's pathway has ended. Let me charge you both to remember that your future happiness is to be found in mutual consideration, mutual patience, mutual kindness, mutual confidence, and mutual affection. Brian, it is your duties to love Michelle as yourself, provide tender leadership, and protect her from danger. Michelle, it is your, your duties to treat Brian with respect, support him, and create a healthy, happy home. It is the duties of each of you to find the greatest joy in the company of the other and to remember that in both interest and affection, you are to be one and undivided. So for as much as Brian and Michelle have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnesses to say before God in this company and have given and pledged their love each to the other and have declared the same by giving and receiving rings, I do, do by virtue of the authority bestowed upon me as a minister of the gospel by ordinances of God and the laws of the state of Wisconsin pronounce you husband and wife in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Now I want to introduce to you, Mr. and Mrs. Brian Kellner. Oh, my God. 